Good morning, pregame crew. This is Chark Gal Lori. It is 622 Mountain Time, 822 Eastern. It is September 21st, 2021. Good morning. I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday morning. I will officially get started in eight minutes. If you're watching later in the day and want to fast forward, you can fast forward for eight minutes. Audio visual check, please. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate it. Hey, Patrick. Amer Asia, Jonathan, John Doe, Barry T, Night Truck, Tammy, Ziki. Oh, no problem. No problem. If you would just go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And I will do my best to give you the best value to earn that like. How about that? And it's all brought to you for free. We're having a slight reaction on Evergrande News that they're missing their payments. We had a little spike down, but as Denzi is pointing out in the room, this news will get muted every time there's news associated with Evergrande. It's the reaction will get less and less uh, severe. So just re remember that. Yes, we got a spike down on it, but these algos will grow insensitive to that information because, I mean, we're pricing it in obviously with this huge dump. So, uh, and I'm saying that yet yeah, this is just pure healthy consolidation. We know that in technical analysis. So. We have an interesting day on our hands. I'm here to help you get ready for the day. We'll learn together. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. Good morning, Prith, Curtis, Bob, Chris, Bobby, John, Roger Morgan. Good morning. Good morning, TCG family. I hope you got a chance to buy the dip yesterday. I hope you shorted your face off. I hope whatever you did was successful. I got a few slides today on some day trading setups. It's the stuff I say all the time, but sometimes it's better for, for me to write it down and aggregate it in one area so I can maybe help you out in defining a system for yourself. No one can define the system for you. It has to be a system that resonates with you because not all systems are the same. It has to fit your personality. So I have a few systems that may work for you and some tools and tricks to keep you in winning trades. And we'll go over that in a bit once we get started. This is my only time to really check the room at the very beginning and at the end and say hi to y'all. I think a few of you have joined over the last day or so in TCG. I'd be interested to see if you're finding the community helpful. Hi, good morning to you from UK. Good morning, good morning. The story for the day is printed on my chart. My chart setup is here. I use TradingView to chart. I use Thinkorswim to trade, and I also use Tastyworks. I, my goal is to transition from Thinkorswim over to Tastyworks because of the contract size that I trade now. Uh, it's capped at 10 contracts, I believe, or $10 the option fee. So that's something that I am transitioning to. I just feel super comfortable with Thinkorswim, so it's not done yet. I hope some of you caught Dutch Bros from Friday. I posted the double bottom. I got a day trade out of that. Here we had $42 hourly double bottom and it popped good. Then yesterday I posted this flag that was developing. I got a scalp out of it as well. Those touchbacks to the five minute 50 RSI, if it comes back under it and then dips above it, it can be an opportunity to add and we were squeezing here, meaning pressure is building. If you know Keltner channels and Bollinger Bands, that's when the Keltner channel comes inside the Bollinger Band. And it's just like turning the Instapot on, turning the what do you, pressure cooker. And we have pressure starts building, building, building. The red dots show us, the tight price action shows us. And then when it pops out of that volatility is compressing, compressing, and then shake the Coke can up, open the can and then it pops and that's what happened yesterday with bros so i'm just it's kind of extended up here it had a huge day yesterday so 
um, and it's up pretty nicely in pre-market. This has a cult following out here on the West Coast. I don't know if y'all have Dutch Bros, but it is pretty popular. So I am bullish the stock overall, but I think it just provides really good day trading opportunities because it was able to run 18% because it's not heavily weighted in the ETFs because it's a new IPO. So SPY could be crashing and this thing can do its own thing. And I like to call those money badgers. So this little money badger just choo-choo did its own thing. Yeah, I probably should never do sound effects again, huh? We probably should just call that a one and done. All right. So right now we're developing a four hour inside bar and I say developing or forming because it's not confirmed until it closes, but we are within the prior four hour range right now. Still an inside bar, even though that dip kind of felt a little severe, we have not broken down out of this pop on the four hour. NASDAQ is fighting over here to hold this low of the initial reaction. Two more minutes. Jessica, you don't like mornings? I'm sorry. From Austria, what a diverse group we have. Yeah, I should never do that again. I'm so sorry for my choo-choo. I was always amazed my son when he would make the noises driving the little cars. I just, I could never make those sound effects. Okay, I'm going to take my chart setup off the screen just to clean things up a bit. If you want it, you can rewind and just screenshot. I used a CM Ultimate RSI multi time frame. The blue line is the corresponding RSI with whatever time frame I'm on. And the orange one is the daily RSI that's plotted on whatever time frame I click. I always have the daily RSI. So I know the daily RSI is 39 right here, and the 15 minute RSI is 45. So it's a multi time frame tool. I'm going to delete that. And I used a Squeeze Pro, it tells me when pressure's building. I am looking for a four hour lower high today. We are running into the EMAs overhead and the hourly 50 EMA. Y'all know that hourly is my God. And we have a frown overhead. I like to draw it to show that it price is sad. The Sotima slope of the EMA is pointing down, just showing the bears are in charge and they're driving the car fast. The steeper the slope, the faster they're driving the car. They're completely in control of the day. I'm looking bearish. Bulls will need to defend any pullback with hourly trend changes. So I'm just going to look from the all time high, which is obviously the clearest pivot there is. The low of yesterday, we have since bounced to the 0.382. We talked about this ad nauseum yesterday about that 0.382. Look at that. We came within $4 of it. Or we went $4 over it, I should say. So that 0.382 was key. Why? Because the bears can still have a bear flag. At this point, this is just a dead cat bounce. A dead cat bounce is slang that just means bears are covering. It's not necessarily bulls stepping in with great enthusiasm to buy this dip. This is primarily bears covering. And we can ride their coattails. I bought the dip yesterday. It was a fun little bounce. But it doesn't mean bulls are in charge whatsoever. They got to get the hourly higher low and hourly higher high during regular trading hours. You don't mean hmm if you do things after trading hours because that's on really low volume. Look at this four hour. Look, bears cover. And who was buying the dip? Everybody was sleeping. Can't buy the dip if you're sleeping. You got to do it in regular trading hours. Hourly trend changes. Let's get a tattoo. That is the story of the day. And this hourly 50 MA on whatever you're looking at, if it's overhead, then you are most likely going to reject at the first test. It's just a good rule of thumb. NASDAQ, we're not as close to the hourly 50 MA, so we can see the ES is a little bit stronger. Now, RTY, interestingly enough, made it up and over. But we need, I would say they had a little hourly trend change here, but that's not a really strong pivot. And we did it overnight. So again, hourly trend changes during regular trading hours. And YM got beat up. We almost hit a thousand points to the downside and we're running into the hourly 50 MA here. It got a good bounce going, but RTY is the strongest, then ES, then NASDAQ, and the Dow is the weakest. I didn't put deer on the watch list and I wanted to watch this. So, or no, cat. Was it cat or deer? 
It was, I think it was cat, yeah. Nope, deer, because we didn't have any support nearby. So we do have some support nearby for deer, and we are really, really beat up. I'm looking for a potential gap fill on this name. But let's go back to the overarching what we're watching today, 0 0.382 overhead, hourly 50 MA overhead, four-hour EMAs overhead. Everything's overhead, so we're running into the ceiling, bonking our head. Hourly trend change during regular trading hours. 4363 is your next support in that key resistance now. 439575, that's the line in the sand for the bulls. Now we're getting this dip, this pullback, make it healthy, and then let's zoom higher, hourly, higher highs, higher lows. Aggressive bears will be looking to top fish these hourly lower highs here, or four hour lower highs. NASDAQ. NASDAQ, your levels 1516325 becomes the line in the sand. RTY 2208, line in sand. YM. 34236, line in sand. And we see Bitcoin pulling back. Bitcoin gets impacted by these news stories. Evergrande is going to impact everyone. No one can hide from this. If it's going to affect the market, it's going to affect Bitcoin. So we have resistance at 43639, support 43067, 42737, and 42163. Good morning, Don, Callum, Ronnie, Blue Dog. Good morning. I say I'm going to start at 6.30, but I always start earlier, don't I? Oh, well, sue me. Ethereum. Resistance, 31.04. This does not look constructive at all. These rounded tops. If we hold here, we could have an early pattern recognition of a 30-minute head and shoulders. Support 3040-2948-310482. And 3123.76. Gold. Gold is getting a little bounce from the fear in the market. Support 17.58. 1754 resistance on this bounce high is 1776 and then we're going up in no man's land 1797 we have a lot of area where we wiped out these stops so we're able to float up through here but we have no resistance let's see oh i wanted to look at dollar what's the dollar doing Dollars pulling back, and that's very helpful for gold and oil. Oil, it's Tuesday. Don't forget API estimates after hours at 4.30 Eastern. Well, I got a little red line happy on this chart, didn't I? Let me start over. So oil and gold, of course, are expressed in dollars. The dollar is the denominator. So the weaker the dollar is, the price can go up and vice versa. So the commodities are liking the weaker dollar. Support 7064, 7047, resistance 7148, and then over 7148 is 7167. I haven't said this in a couple days, so let's get our bearings on oil. Four hour, excuse me, monthly bull flag potential. Monthly bull flag potential. We got that weekly bear break with very little follow through, and it made us go look for that potential bull flag on a higher time frame, zooming out. So this chart is bullish. We are fighting, just absolutely battling with the 200 MA overhead. It'll be interesting to see if we can get over it. There was some oil news this morning, but I am not smart enough to interpret that news as bullish or bearish because I am no OPEC expert. All right, now I'm going to stop here. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I'm Chart Gal Lori, but I'm stopping to go over some education. So Chart Gal Lori on Twitter, if you want to give me a follow, I post setups there. Okay, so we're just going to go over day trade setups and tools, and I just wanted to aggregate it on one screen so you can screenshot it, write it down. If it helps you, if not, then take a nap for the next three minutes. If you don't need this information, potential trade setups, high of low bar or stair step. So Dan did a recent video on stair step if you want to watch it. I use high of low bar term because we need to see it so clearly on those opening drive plays where we have... I'm on the struggle bus, y'all, where we have the lows, we have multiple candles down, and then once we break the high of the low bar and we put our stop below the low, that's what I call the high of low bar setup for opening drive plays. The stair step is video is so much more detailed than what I go over uh, on my brief pregame show. And oh, by the way, I'm Chart Guy Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. You have found yourself at the pregame show. I go over Fab Four futures, cryptos, commodities, and movers and shakers of the day. Getting back to potential day trade setup. 
push-ups, high blow bar, stair step, back burner. And if anyone needs a stair step video, if a mod could plop it in the chat room, I would appreciate it. So back burner trade is when you've had this huge move and preferably to all time high, preferably. And then that first pullback, you can do the five minute oversold bounce or the next trade would be the at first hourly oversold bounce after a new all time high. So that's something we use in TCG all the time. Uh, bull flag bottom fish from a 50 RSI on the five minute. I just showed y'all bros. I was looking for a 30 minute bull flag over here. I saw this little bear break with very little follow through. And then I bottom fished this 50 RSI on bros for a uh, bull flag bottom fish from 50 RSI on the five minute. That's something specific. I don't hear a lot of people talk about it, but it's a tool that's been helping me and I've been using it more lately. Equilibriums. And most of the time, if you have an equilibrium, you have an inside bar on a higher time frame. There's also something called the strat that was in, created by Rob Smith. It's a very brilliant strategy that just makes everything really black and white. It's something you may be interested in if you like trading inside bars. Correlation trades. So yesterday I was pointing out that Apple was not making a new low of day when QQ was, and that was a good dip buy on QQQ because Apple saved the day. So if you watch your correlations, and of course I'm constantly piling all, compiling all types of data to gather this, I'm looking for Apple support, QQQ support, what's going on with SPY, what's going on with the market internals, but just making it easy, I'm just lumping it all into correlation trades. Double tops and double bottoms, one of my absolute favorite trades. Let's see if I can find this quickly, probably not. I took this trade over here, 161.34, on JPM and it came up and tested that 161.34 and I entered it short and then I did it again this this day. So where you have two candles, maybe it's an inside bar, but if you scroll out, am I gonna have to do this? Scroll back. And now I'm messing up my fibs. Sorry y'all, it's important enough for me to go here. That 161. 31. So we got a little double top. I was looking for that five minute lower high and I shorted it. I can't emphasize enough how this trade changed my trading, this trade setup. So double tops, double bottoms. Tools to keep you in winning trades. So one of the toughest things to learn when you first start out is staying in the winning trades. You're, you become very patient with losers and impatient with winners. We got to flip the script in order to be a successful trader. So as long as price is staying above the five minute EMAs, you stay in long. You can make a simple rule like that and it will keep you in winning trades longer. Price below five minute EMAs, stay in short if you're going short. You could use hike and ashy candles, which are smoothing candles that show you a trend. So you're staying in the trend longer using these candles. 50 RSI touches. Okay, if, if it comes back, it touches the 50 RSI, doesn't break it, okay, then I'm gonna stay in. And look, this list could be 50,000 whatever long. This is not an all-inclusive list. This is just my top tips to keep you in winning trades. Scaling out will make you more comfortable in a trade and keep you in longer. Position size will definitely keep you in a winning trade longer. If you're sized down, you're not as jumpy. You could use things like an ATR trailing stop, which I love on Thinkorswim. I like that indicator, where as long as those little dots, it has little dots below you or above you. So if you're in a short, it has it prints these ATR trailing stops and it puts these little dots over price. And the minute the dots go below price, you exit your short. It's a great tool if you use Thinkorswim. So that's just a few tools to keep you in a winning trade. Tools to get you out of a losing trade or prevent a winner from turning into a loser. Loss of five minute EMAs, you get out. And that's to the upside or to the downside, depending on what trade you're taking. Market correlations. If something is strongly correlated with the market and the market starts pulling back hard and you're in long, you may wanna get out of that closely correlated name. Oversold or overbought. So if you're shorting something and this, Short is getting five minute oversold and maybe time to get out and take some profit. And the same thing to the long side. A volume shift, some big bear bull volume comes in. Again, ATR trailing stop, flipping the strip, the switch. 
walking up stops on higher lows and vice versa, lower highs, just walking those stops up or down and it makes you more comfortable. You're like, okay, that's where my stop is and it's closer, so I'm just gonna let this play out a little bit longer. So I hope that helped give you just a few batched trading systems and a couple tools to keep you in winning trades. Now let's go look at Apple. Okay, Apple. I am looking short Apple. Top fish setup, hourly lower highs is what I'm looking for, four hour lower highs, and waiting on hourly trend changes. So I'm not just gonna carte blanche say, oh, we're green this morning, I'm gonna go long. No, I'm looking short on Apple, would love a top fish, and I'm gonna wait for that lower high setup. So I want it, I want it to bounce and then give me a low of high bar where it it's going up. Let me draw that out, where it's going up, 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 and breaks that low of high bar and put my stop over the high or looking for that five minute low or high. I want a short apple, but I'm not going to be piggish about it. If we're just going to bounce all day, then so be it. But I am looking short. That is my lean and I have to pick a lean based on the charts. And we're at that 0.382 on NASDAQ. Where are we on Apple? We are at 0.236, so we could bounce to 14738 and still be a bear flag on Apple. So Apple's pretty weak compared to NASDAQ, which really helps my thesis that this is the name I want to go short. So looking to short 144.80, 144.84, and we've got a corresponding fib here at 145, but I'm going to wait for a five minute lower high top fish or a low of high bar trade. Bill. Bill had an earn, uh, an offering, okay, Bill to offer $1 billion of common stock. So this name has ran hard. Potential weekly bull flag, and this is some pretty bearish news. This is an IBD50 name. Wouldn't be surprised if people are just anxiously awaiting this dip so they can buy the dip. But right now, I would only be looking to short pops on Bill. If it were to come up to the 275 area, that could be a good area to go to start looking short, but wait for a setup just because you have a price range. So we have an area we want to look short in this range. We want to look short, but that doesn't mean you just carte blanche go. You just ultimately go short there no matter what happens. No, we need a setup low of high bar or lower high or inside bars or equilibrium, whatever system you're using BLI. BLI was a big winner for us on what was that Friday? One second. Yes, well, where's my notes? There it is, inside day, inside day. I wrote it twice, it was so good, I wrote it twice. So we have a nice tight range from yesterday, high of 27.18, low of 24.75. This was that Scorpion Capital hit piece and then it bounced Friday. Bank of America came out and said that they thought that the short report was overstated and then Kathy Wood bought some. So daily inside bar to trade. Just wait for a tightening range, wait for a lower high to top fish or a higher low. So you see, I don't have a color on it because I just have a tightening range. So if the market's pulling back, I will start looking bearish BLI. If the market is bouncing hard, I will be looking bullish BLI. I'm just going to go with the market on this one inside tightening range, bros. Bros, I already covered this. It just has some nice bullish momentum. I would love a five minute oversold. Let's go put that alert and this one's tough to trade so be careful the spreads are a little big right now i size down on these newer ipos when there is a spread issue so i would love to buy a five minute back burner on bros etsy upgrade to 265 it's bullish on larger time frames so let's go zoom out here on etsy look how pretty this is a weekly inside bar we have a squeeze this is a bullish chart daily we got a higher high we don't have a confirmed trend change but with this upgrade this morning this may be a name to go long if the market's continuing to bounce you may get a bullish trade out of etsy with this upgrade news jpm i'm looking short again another trend line that i don't use and here it is on my chart so i'm looking for a top fish hourly lower high setup on jpm and I will patiently wait for it to come to me. If it wants to bounce all day, then I'm just gonna smile and wave. J and J. Okay, making sure. Oh, no problem. All right, 
Sorry, I was just checking the room. Daily oversold, nice hold of support yesterday, positive news. So we held this support back here, 161.79. We hit 162.17. This is, uh, it's not a stair step strategy because that one candle kind of puts fly in the ointment. But I like this to the long side on this news. Would love a pull back and do the high of low bar strategy on J&J &J to the long side. Looking long, J&J. MRNA. So MRNA has a daily inside bar. It is a huge, it's a volatile mover. So be careful on this one if you are a newer trader. So nice tightening range. So I would love for the market to have that hourly higher low this morning and for MRNA to stay within this range and then the market to possibly take off and go get that hourly higher high trend change during regular trading hours and trade this to the long side. Man, that was a wordy way of saying I'm bottom fishing this daily inside bar, I want to get in down here above 420.10. I don't know if it's going to give me that opportunity because the J&J &J positive news could be a bullish correlation for MRNA. Tesla? Come on. I like it when I write stuff. I didn't write anything on this one. Okay, four-hour lower high. Top fish setup on Tesla 742 would be a level to look at top fishing. That must be an error. Oh, that's not an errant line. I just put it right there for the 21 at EMA. I have to go back and remember what I was thinking because I forgot to type it. So I'm looking to top fish this four hour lower high on Tesla. 742, 745 would be another area to possibly go short. Wait for the setup. Uber, Uber got some Uber bullish news this morning. Y'all know I had to do that. It's fun to be punny. Uber shares up 6.5% pre-market after company expects to deliver sequential adjusted EBITDA improvement in Q4. I'm looking for HOAL and hold high of low bar setup, stair step, or back burner trade on Uber. There's a bunch of ways to skin this cat. So support 41.35 and 40.04. If it would pull back in the 41 area, I would love that high of low bar setup. Looking bullish on Uber. Spy, here are your levels. If you want to screenshot that, I'm looking to top fish. Would love a top fish of 43893. So 439. QQQ. Let me clean that up. Things have changed since I marked it up. Here are your levels. Now, what do you have for me? Brett, I don't always say queen of the mountain. I don't always say it. If you see a color over here, the, that's the direction I'm looking for these five names. But if it's on my list, I will say th these are all Queen of the Mountain setups. I wouldn't be reviewing them if I didn't. Up here, if it's up here, that means I'm looking to trade it. This is my chart setup for the day. I have all my ETFs, all my indices. Then I have Apple, I'm looking short. Bill, I'm looking short. j and J, I'm looking long. Uber, I'm looking long. So th those are my Queen of the Mountain setup. So if you want to know a tip trick every day is go look up here and see what charts I have pulled up. 99% of the time, those are my queen of the mountain, high conviction trade setups that I'm comfortable with. I will give you setups with names like, um, here's another one for today. NNVC, bullish setup, uh, bullish move in pre-market, but I don't trade these. So this may be a queen of the mountain setup, but it's not something that I personally trade. It's not my style. So NNVC, lots of pre-market volatility for you day traders. Just wait for tightening ranges. So that's the whole story on Queen of the Mountain. RKT. All right, let's look at it. Okay, on the monthly, this thing looks sad. 1622. Oh, that was a nice double bottom. Whoa. 1622, 1623. I like when we have those exact double bottom. Okay, that's a weekly falling wedge. Interesting setup. Very interesting, and we hit it yesterday. The 16, okay. So this is bearish. You have a high, high probability of getting stopped out of this name if you go long. However, when your risk is so clearly defined, it's a risk worth taking, in my opinion, when you hit it within one penny. Your stop would be at 1620 if you bottom fished yesterday. So that's why I that's why I'm kind of making these noises over this chart. So 
We got to get over 1673 decisively. We hit 1675 this morning during regular trading hours. And that's a pretty interesting Adam and Eve reversal on this one. But I would move my stop up from that original 1620. That would have been my stop had I bottom fished yesterday. But man, that was a nice one. Nice, nice. Okay. Okay, let's do... I already went over gold. It's having a nice bounce. Platinum's having a beautiful bounce. Your next resistance, 949. But the result of this bounce will odds favor a lower high compared to 949.10. So nice bounce, nice pop. Just move your stop up. If you're long, just walk your stop up. We're getting little topping wicks up here. I would be careful up here. This could be a potential short area. Do you have a resistance to short? Uh, 934. So this looks good. This looks constructive. So now the bulls have given themselves enough room to get that four hour lower high. Silver. Silver is not as strong. The pop is not as strong on the four hour. Much weaker possible daily bear flag. I do like that we got, no, we didn't get a double bottom. It broke it by 20 cents. That's too much. We did keep this support though. Hourly, we have enough room for a higher low. It's looking a little toppy as well. Okay, coin, and then I'm done. Dan will go live in seven minutes. 22691. Okay, we held that support yesterday. Yesterday's low becomes the line in the sand. This looks bearish. That looks like a potential four hour bear flag. 23860 is your resistance. Then up at 24485. SRTY, uh, that is an ETF. Yeah. Ugh. This one's already had its fun. You see that? It's a short RTY moment. It had its pop. So it could get going again, but you need consolidation in my opinion. Your support is way down at 926. You could look to bottom fish daily high or low. That's it for me. Thank you for joining me. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend, tell your mother, and use stop losses.